I think we white women have an inferiority complex. The Eastern women and the, the Negro women have a sort of reputation for being so beautiful. I guess we're a little just, jealous of them. I guess you just envy us colored people. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, is there anything corresponding to that in... Well, I think so, Mrs. Waller, because in the Philippines, it's just funny. There's a common tendency among women. Well, those who have a, 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 a dark complexion, I should say, or just a tanned one, or just a brown complexion, well, especially these uh, high society matrons. Well, even if they've got already wrinkles on their face, they still want to bleach their skins. This Filipino boy is absolutely amazing. I heard he turned into a journalist. He's called Raul. I think we should hear what he has to say about prejudice way back in 1956. Farm discussion on the roots of prejudice. We'll be talking about what our prejudices are, where they came from, how they're nourished, and perhaps even how to get rid of them. Let me introduce you to the four student participants in today's discussion. Ratnati Iskandardi Nata, high school student, 17 years old, and also a talented dancer from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. From Japan, Yoriko Konishi, whose lovely voice you've just heard. From time to time, we like you to get a sense of what we do in all those times when we aren't having serious discussions. We very often get Yoriko to dance or sing for us. Okay. She does both. From the United Kingdom, 18-year-old Judith Reeder. Judith's got a bit of a cold today. It did not come from swimming in the Atlantic Ocean, although she assures <laughs> us that when she's in England, she does swim in the ocean during the winter. From the Philippines, Raul Contreras. Raul will be 16 years old, patriotically enough, on the 4th of July. Wow. Uh, he may admit some prejudices, but one he obviously doesn't have is a prejudice against women, or he wouldn't have been willing to appear tonight with three women being the only male on the program. No. All right. So as you guys can see, huh? He's the only male here with three other ladies. All right. They're all very young. Imagine Raul here is only 15 years old. But you are going to be so impressed. You cannot believe how these youngsters are answering the questions. This is hosted by the International Herald Tribune, which was an amazing newspaper. I love to read this. Unfortunately, a few years ago, it stopped printing. All right. Let's hear what they have to say about prejudice. When a person loses track of the uh, dignity of the human soul and begins to judge others not on the basis of their being persons, but on the basis of race, creed, economic status, that is prejudice. Wow! Did you hear Raul? The, the power in his voice is so deep and the way he speaks is just unbelievable, amazing, and he's absolutely right. Prejudice, this is something that is very important even today, maybe even more than ever before. As you've seen things unfolding in the US over the last few weeks or a few years, you know, this is an important issue right now. Whether you have any prejudices? Well, I guess so, Mrs. Waller. And uh, being brutally frank, I am, I'm, a, well, prejudiced against Japanese. <laughs> well, not to the extent that, that uh, I hate them. No, okay. not that way. But uh, I got this, well, as a result of World War II. Because, well, I guess I was yet too young to understand uh, what happened during those times. But uh, I think that what my relatives and friends and the people who were witness to that uh, unfaithful occasion, well, they just uh, more yeah. than justify the fact. And uh, I think uh, it's justified for me to feel the same way yeah. because well, I know that my people suffered very much under that rule. You still as prejudiced against the Japanese as you were? Well, five years ago, that uh, prejudice of mine was, uh, well, slightly fading away. But when Japan uh, stubbornly refused to pay reparations to us, well, the prejudice began to brew again. Okay. But now I found out from close contact with Yuriko and other Japanese that Japan isn't ready to pay reparations yet. Because as Yuriko said, uh, some of them, and most of them, even have to suffer the, the cold in the uh, classrooms because they can't afford to heat this. Oh, really? Um, Eureka, you've got any prejudices? So one of the reasons the Japanese didn't want to pay uh, the Philippines right after the war was basically they wanted to get ahead with the economy and they said they were absolutely too poor after the war to be able to pay. So I think this guy, this Raul, seems extremely smart. Yes, he admits to have some prejudice, but I guess everybody has in some way. But the way he talks, I mean, he, he seems so intelligent. 
This is incredible. This is way back in 1956. And remember, guys, he's only 15 years old. Try to talk to a 15-year-old TikToker today and hear if they can talk like he can, because I bet you they don't. Let's come back to you a minute, Ralph. Are there any prejudices in the Philippines between groups of people? Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, there are existing uh, prejudices between groups of people. As a matter of fact, uh, most of us still, well, are prejudiced against uh, a group of hybrids. Those hybrids. are more Spanish blood. Oh, Filipino okay, I get it. In them, and we term, term them as uh, mestizos. Yeah. Well, it, uh, the, well these uh, incidents uh, well, usually occur in the schools. As you know, I'm okay. in, in a school run by a Spanish monks, and right. uh, well, we have a lot of uh, we we have a lot of those uh, of that group studying in our school, and usually they are they are favored. But mm, think, really, and uh, well, we <laughs> think that we are right in saying that they are sort of aristocratic, conceited, right. and high high headed and <laughs> sore headed and all sorts of adjectives, and they have the uh, the foolish idea that they have. Uh, the royal blood or royalty in them. Well, how do you get along with these boys in school, Raoul? Are there any problems? Well, well, frankly speaking, I don't get along with them pretty well. As a matter of fact, well, we usually fight with it with one another. Really? Is there any problem? Yes, Eureka. Yes, um... Wow. So, at that time, I don't know if it's still like that, guys, but please leave me a comment below if you think so. There was a lot of prejudice now towards your uh, mestizos, sabe ni Raoul, huh? I don't know if it's still like that or if it really was like that, but leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. Were they the favorite ones? I guess they were, especially during those times. But I think it's still like that, isn't it? Well, Judy, I don't think all Asians are lazy. No, yeah. you're misunderstanding me. I said that was a general opinion. Maybe not now. I hope certainly well, not. A general opinion, but, well, when it's not, it's, uh, well, sort of wrong to, to say that the, they are lazy. Uh, let's, yeah. just, let's just say that they've got the very flat feet that they can't <laughs> lift them up. Because you've got to consider, for example, the climate in most of yes. the regions in Asia. Well, it's just but natural. You, you, can't, uh, you can't just uh, work with all the hot, yeah. the warm climate around you. Of course, you'd always feel like fanning yourself. Yeah. <laughs> or going to an air-conditioned theater or something else that where it's cold. Correct. Is there not only this difference of climate that explains uh, a difference in tempo, but is there a difference in philosophy too that perhaps we in the West haven't appreciated? I wonder. Well, as far as I know it, and uh, well, I think you've mentioned it in this program that Indians think that they should never soil their hands. <laughs> and uh, in the Philippines, I must admit that, well, <laughs> we're sort of inclined to get white collar jobs and swivel right. chairs. Most of us do, especially the new college graduates. Yeah. We don't want to work with our hands. We want to have, well, big bosses and uh, with pretty secretaries around us. That's a common <laughs> tendency. I, well, I guess what Raul here is saying, he's looking for pretty secretaries at the office. So it's always been like that. This is nothing new. Huh? But I mean, I think he's very right about this. Uh, Filipinos would like to get jobs which does not entail hard labor. They'd rather work in a call center or an office with air conditioning, you know, instead of being outside sweating. And who can blame them? It's a hot country, you know? Now, with this thing about Europeans thinking that Asians are lazy, I've heard this before. When I was a kid, you know, we always heard this, even before I came to Asia. Like, a lot of people back in Europe, they would think that Asians are lazy. You know, they don't work as hard. Well, I think there are many reasons for this. Of course, everybody looks at it different, and Asia is very big. Now, North and South, East, West doesn't compare. For Europeans, this is very hard to understand. Just to give you a little bit of insight from a European perspective on what I think people in Europe uh, believe about Asians being lazy, which is absolutely not true, no? But, Raul here is right. Very hot countries, especially in Southeast Asia. So. You, you, you kind of tend to slow down a little bit. You don't want to walk very fast outside because my init talaga, the baso, so pa bawis, no? Ayoko din kanon talaga. So for me, uh, everything here is a bit slower. Now, there's also something else. You have to remember that in Europe, many countries, we only harvest once a year. So we had to work uh, differently, um, planning differently for our harvesting seasons 
unlike here in the Philippines and most other Southeast Asian countries where you could harvest more than once a year. Like in Europe for instance, people in the north they think that the people in the south of Europe are lazy. But then again because in the south of Europe it's much harder and they can harvest more than we can. So things work different and of course in South uh, Europe they don't want to go out during the hot hours in the afternoon so they take siestas which is a great idea. I mean who wants to be out in the hot burning sun, right? I was about to ask them what do they think are the most uh, common or basic causes of uh, our prejudices? Is it yeah. mainly skin color? No, maybe. Do you mean the... Oh, do you mean, for example, taking the American well, people in the South? I guess the taking the American side of it, it's just that the white people don't want to, to mix themselves up with the, with the colored ones. So what about the colored people? Perhaps they don't want to mix with the white people either. Oh. <laughs> well, what about, since you Good brought point. up the American race problem, uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, is it as bad as you thought it was going to be before you came, or is it better or worse? Well, I think uh, it's, it's uh, what I've seen here and what I've heard while I am here and uh, what I have read in the newspapers, it's just worse than I expected. Wow, really? Don't you agree, Judith? No, I don't agree. Um, she doesn't agree. In England, we don't hear too much about the American problem, except, of course, when a certain case came up. Well, I do think that the race issues are much worse in the USA than in any other country in the world. Okay, in Europe, our race problems are not nearly as bad. Okay, there are still some race problems, but we also have them here. We have them everywhere in the world. Japan has race problems, South America has it, but the US is very unique. They are supposed to be a, uh, a hot pot, or they are supposed to be, you know, a halo halo country, deba. I mean, they're mixed with any kind of race, but somehow, the prejudice against other races in America is extreme. Try to, you know, just look at people as being people. Let's not look at the color. Color has nothing to say about this. It's all about the individual person. I'm really amazed at this Raul guy, huh? I mean, he seems to be very intelligent, very smart. He's got answers for everything. He's, he's very clear. He's very determined. He knows exactly what he's talking about. So let's go on. Okay. Well, Adding something to that, isn't it that, uh, well, in uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, right. you mentioned something about, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America right. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation right. invisible under God with liberty and justice for all. Right. Well, the last phrase just doesn't sort everything. I mean, with this segregation problem here mm. and the uh, discrimination against colored people, how, how in the world could you have... Uh, uh, liberty and justice for all yes and uh, i in one of my hospitality periods i i didn't expect that even the kids could carry it that far really the, well uh privilege i should say of attending one of the uh, dances sponsored by by one of the uh, civic groups okay and i just noticed that well it was a big dance floor and all the white kids were assembled on the left side and the most uh, well shall we say not strategic part of the ballroom well, all the colored boys and girls were in there. And I really? never saw a white boy asking a, uh, a colored girl for a dance, nor did I see a colored boy asking a white girl for oh a dance. Oh my goodness. The segregation problem was really humongous in the U.S. And I think even until today, this is still casting a long shadow over the way the USA is as a society. Now, I've seen it. I've been in the U.S. many, many times. I love the U.S. I just... Do not like the way they have all these racial problems. I think we white women have an inferiority complex. The Eastern ah. women and the, the Negro women have a sort of reputation for being so beautiful. I get really? really jealous of them. I guess you <laughs> just envy us colored people. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything corresponding to that? In <laughs> well, I think so, Mrs. Waller, because in the Philippines it's just funny. There's a common tendency among women. Well, those who have a, a, a a dark complexion, I should say, or just a tanned one, okay. which is a brown complexion. Yeah. Well, especially these uh, high society matrons. Well, even if they've got already wrinkles on their face, they still want to bleach their skin. <laughs> Suppose you meet one right now and you say, oh, good morning, and uh, you see that she's just tanned and brown. Right. But after three months, you meet the same person. Okay. With the, ha with the usual society walk, and uh, trying to be very dignified, yeah. and uh, cultured and everything. And you just noticed that her face was uh, slighter than before. <laughs> and uh, 
When you look at, uh, at her <coughs> hands and everything up to her arms, well, you, you'll be likable to say to exclaim Holy Moses, <laughs> because there's a, a real, very great difference, you see. She's about very light here, but you look at, at the arms and everything, right. and uh, the, the lower part of the body, but gee, it's, it's just a, a very great difference. It's colored here, but it's very light. They really bleach the their skin? They do, Mrs. Waller. They well, what pay. about Japan? Does that, Japanese women don't want to change well, it anyway. I just love Raoul. The way he talks, you know, is just so smart, unbelievable. And he's got the best, you know, the way he talks is just absolutely amazing. Well, I guess we should uh, carefully uh, examine the indiv individual first before passing any judgment on him. Mm -hmm. And if we ever pass a judgment, we should be just with him. Right. That's a good note to end on. Thank you, Adati, Noriko, Judith, and Raoul. Next week, we're going to continue on this subject of prejudice okay. with four delegates from Africa. Wow, so what do you think about Raoul? I think he is one of the smartest persons I've ever heard. You know, he's 15 years old, it's way back in 1956, meaning to say he was born in Manila during the war, during the Second World War. And he is so intelligent, so smart. I mean, not only does he speak extremely good English, fluent, but the way he talks, the way he delivers it, and his reactions, I mean, it's just perfect. I just wonder if a 15-year-old person today, not just in the Philippines, but anywhere in the world, actually is as smart and intelligent as he is. So guys, why don't you tell me below in the comments, what do you think about Raul? Is he also one of the smartest persons you've ever heard, especially considering that he's only 15 years old? So I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and of course the bell button so you'll be notified when we have new videos for you.